Now let's talk about some of the hand positions in the first four. So the first hand position is the Yati Chongkin on this or the straight vertical punch. Now a lot of people say that your vertical punch should do this at the end, do this at the end. Um, don't really worry about it. What you want to do is focus on driving the bottom three knuckles straight into the target. So don't worry about going like this or like this. So when you come out, just drive the bottom three knuckles straight from here, straight into the target. When you have that, then you have the correct, correct technique. So for the palms, make sure that your palms are like this and your finger is tucked nice and neat next to your hand. Make sure it's not hanging out like this or even slightly like this because this can easily get caught when you're trying to palm somebody, you can get caught in somebody's arm and it can easily sprain or dislocate your, your thumb. So make sure your palms are like this. One good exercise for training your palms is to try to extend your arms straight out and try to pull your fingers straight back and touch your shoulder with it. Alright, so what that does is trains your tendons and trains your ligaments to become a lot stronger. And that way you can get a lot more inch power and short inch power that we practice a lot in Wing Chun. Another position that you'll see is the Tan Sao, Fok Sao, and Wu Sao. So when you're doing your Tan Sao, Fok Sao, and Wu Sao, try to keep your wrist in the same position. All you're changing is the hand shape. The rest of your structure will remain the same. So none of this is moving. The only thing that is moving is my hand. So here we go. We got the Tan Sao, we got the circle hand, we got the Fuk, I mean the Wu Sao, we got the Fuk Sao, it's all the same. So none of this is moving. All we're changing is the shape of the hand. Another important point is the position of the elbow and the structure of the elbow in the whole form. The reason we want to slide the hand or the arm across our body like this, slide it across the body, is we want to keep the elbow as close to the center line as possible as we're moving it out. Now, you want to keep it as close as possible, but you don't want it to be so right in the middle so much that you lose your structure here. All right, you want to keep your structure because what this does is it tends to um, make your spine distort a little bit too much. So just go close enough so that you can feel that this is sinking down, but not too much in the middle, but not too much flared out. A good way to do this is to do push-ups on the ground while real close, okay? Find the position on the ground where it's easiest for you to do a push-up with your elbows real close to your body. Now, if you can do a push-up, you can experiment. You can try holding a position like this, now is this going to be easier or is this going to be easier? I think you will find that having your elbows close to your body will be easier. You can even rest it on the, onto your chest. Now if you put it up here, what happens is now you're using your shoulder muscles and you're not engaging your back muscles to keep your, um, keep your energy forward. This will just be using your shoulder muscles and your chest muscles. But when you bring them in like this, nice and close, but not, not this close, about this close, then what that ha happens is it engages your back muscles and your shoulders and your chest. So more muscles are engaged and also the structure will um, connect your wrist directly into your spine a lot better than if you do this. All right, that's why we have a really close elbow whenever we do our hand positions in the first form.